Good evening and welcome to this night prayer service on Monday the 15th of February. I hope you're well and I hope that you are able to spend this half an hour uh, with me in prayer. If you would uh, like to have a candle lit for this service or if you'd like a cross in front of you, please feel free to do either or both of those things. The readings tonight, if you have a Bible and uh, you'd like to have the readings ready, uh, the Old Testament reading is Psalm 47. Psalm 47. And the New Testament reading is Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. So, as we prepare to spend this time together with the Lord, let's just spend a few moments in quiet. Just release the things of today and of the weekend and just focus on being with God right now. Let's be quiet for a moment. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And so we pause again for a few moments of quiet and allow the Holy Spirit to prompt us in our spirit to show us those things that perhaps we need to say sorry to God. We need to say sorry perhaps for things that we've thought or said or done or things that we should have done that we didn't. So let's again just be quiet before God, surrender to him those things for which we seek his forgiveness. And so confident in the God who is so ready to forgive us, we are released from all that binds us to temptation, to the past, and we are set free in the name of Jesus. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And the night prayer song said as a poem, before the ending of the day, creator of the world we pray, that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that be, we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And so we turn to our scripture readings. And in my uh, study Bible, Psalm 47, is, uh, has this little piece that says the theme of this psalm is God is still king of the world. 
and all nations of the earth will eventually recognize his lordship. So Psalm 47, and I'm reading tonight from the New Revised Standard Version, Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples, shout to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord the Most High is awesome, awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of God, of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The people of the God of Abraham. Abraham, one of the patriarchs in the Old Testament, but seen as the father, if you like, of all peoples, because God said that from Abraham, generation upon generation would live on the earth. So in Abraham, Jew and Gentile and all believers are gathered together. His God is our God. And so we turn now to our New Testament reading which is Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is any other gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to per pervert the gospel of Christ. But if even, even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, so now I repeat, if anyone proclaims to you a gospel contrary to what you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now seeking human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, Please, people, I would not be a servant of Christ. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born, called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me, so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles. 
I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I, I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then after three years I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, or Peter, and stayed with him for fifteen days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, The one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The province of Galatia is now the present day Turkey and Paul journeyed through Galatia more than once and established churches. There are towns and cities, you heard it mentioned, you'll hear it uh, read in the Bible as well, Lystra and Iconium and Dab. One of Paul's goals on his missionary journeys was to visit areas that had uh, large population centres in order that the gospel of Jesus Christ could be heard by as many people as possible. Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians in reply to attacks from false teachers. What was happening was that the Galatians were turning from faith to legalism, trying to earn God's favour through obeying certain rituals or a set of rules. And that's still a relevant issue today. So Paul underlines and emphasises the authenticity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Christ we are not boxed in by rules. We are set free by grace. And to retain that freedom, we need to stay close to Christ. And indeed resist any subtle temptation to earn our salvation by any other means. God's grace means that we have salvation freely through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. There is no other way. He alone makes us right with God. So Paul, in our scripture tonight, is defending his apostleship and the authority of the gospel. He's also explaining that his apostleship and that of the leaders of the church in Jerusalem, they have the same basis. So Paul and Peter and James and John and all the others, all the other apostles, have been called by Jesus Christ and God the Father and it's in them that they have their authority, in Jesus and in God the Father. So as we witness to the grace of God in our lives, as we show others what it means to be saved from sin, we need always to be clear that we witness under the authority of God not un under any of our own authority, it is only under the authority of God and it is to God we will answer. There may be those who come at us with all sorts of various arguments, some of which can be very subtle, and they try to complicate matters. <laughs> but faith in Jesus Christ is not complicated. It might be deep, but it's not complicated. Jesus died for us. He took our sins on himself on the cross and they're nailed there. We do not need to live under condemnation anymore. Jesus saves. Something else struck me uh, in this reading. Paul speaks of God revealing Jesus to him. 
and afterwards not conferring with anyone or and he didn't go to Jerusalem at that time but he went into Arabia and then later back to Damascus and then it says after three years Paul says after three years I then went up to Jerusalem to meet with Peter how important were those three years to Paul yet he skips over them there three years is quite a long time but here he's, he's saying that he spent three years spending time with God he's met with Jesus on the road to Damascus but he doesn't ru rush off into ministry even with all his education even with that spectacular conversion experience he takes the time to get ready he meets with Peter and gets to know him and James as fellow apostles. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in that conversation. There is a time of preparation, a time of get, getting ready. And this week, uh, as we celebrate Ash Wednesday, we celebrate the start, the beginning of this period of Lent. It's a time of getting ready in order to be able to celebrate Easter fully. It's traditionally a time when we give up things, a time of self-denial, so that we can concentrate more on God and, and not on ourselves. Now, many would say that due to the time that we've been living through and are still living through, we've had more than enough opportunity for reflection and spiritual self-examination. If you, like me, this year been drawn closer to God, then we can say yes, amen and hallelujah. But if you have felt isolated and you have felt cut off from God, perhaps cut off from church, your family, your friends, then maybe this Lent is the absolutely right time to just allow God, by his Holy Spirit, to draw close to you again. Allow him in. Allow spiritual reflection. It's just like he did with Paul. He revealed himself to Paul and God reveals himself to us. The basis of our faith is the same as that of Paul and Peter and all the faith giants. The basis is still the same. Our confidence and our only confidence is in Jesus Christ. There's no greater love. There's no greater sacrifice. There's no greater rede redemption than that found in Jesus. It's not complicated. It's deep. But it's just pure and simple faith. Amen. As we turn to our prayer time, I'm again, like last week, I'm going to use some of the prayers from the Church of England resources uh, called Prayer for the Nation. Uh, the archbishops have called us to pray for our country uh, during this time. So let us be still. O oh, blessed Jesus, give us stillness of soul in you. Let your mighty calmness reign in us. Rulers, O King of gentleness, King of peace. My God, I believe so firmly that you watch over all those who hope in you and that we can want for nothing when we rely upon you in all things that I am therefore resolved for the future to have no anxieties and to cast all my cares on you. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the weekly prayer. Loving Father God, be with us in our distress. Be with our families, friends and neighbours, our country and our world. Give health to the sick, hope to the fearful and comfort to mourners. Give wisdom to our frontline and key workers, insight to our government and patience to us all. Overcome disease with the power of your new life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Loving God, your Son, Jesus Christ, came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Pour out your blessing upon our nation. Where there is illness, bring your healing touch. Where there is fear, strengthen us with the knowledge of your presence. Where there is uncertainty, build us up in faith. Where there is dishonesty, lead us into truth. Where there is discord, may we know the harmony of your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. John chapter 11 verse 3 says this, Lord, the one you love is ill. So we bring to God all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, or suffer with grief. We ask that in God's great loving kindness, they might know God's sustaining presence amidst their pain. We pray for those who are stretched beyond their capacity to cope and remain hopeful that in the roar of these waterfalls, God would bring a sense of coherence, comfort and strength. And so from our fellowship of St. Thomas's Church, we especially pray tonight for Ginny, Anne, Sheila, Louise, Leah, Debbie, Stephen, Nick and Joanne, Bob and Sue, Norman and Jean, and all those on our prayer tree. God of all healing, bring your comfort, strength and peace, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Watch, O Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep tonight, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, O Lord Christ, rest your weary ones, bless your dying ones, soothe your suffering ones. Pity your afflicted ones, shield your joyous ones, and all for your love's sake. Amen. And we pray, O Lord, for all those in positions of leadership, in the government of our country, in the government of our town. We pray too for the leadership of the church. We pray for our bishops, Julian, Philip and Jill, praying, O oh Lord, that you will give them all wisdom. And Lord, we, we pray that you will give them respite and healing in this time of great change and decision making, planning the way forward, still declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray for our Vicar Dave, for Alison and for Josh, and we pray a blessing upon them and the Vicarage. And we ask for your protection, your healing and your wholeness, Lord. We pray for our curate Emma and her boys, praying that you will give them all that they need at this time. We pray for Barbara as she continues her training towards ordination. And we thank you for the work and witness of Yvonne. 
We pray for our church wardens, Pauline and Denise, thanking you, O Lord, for their dedication and their faithfulness in upholding your church at St. Thomas's. We pray for all our PCC members, for all those who are working tirelessly, both on the live streaming of services, recording of services, on our prayer line, our prayer tree, our pastoral team. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all those involved in education in any way, in our schools, our colleges, our universities, as they struggle, Lord, to maintain the curriculum during this time, the teaching of young minds. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will give our teachers the courage and the strength that they need to carry on with this most vital work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So using the words of St. Teresa of Avalon. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. And so as we draw our prayers to a close, let us pray in the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit all our homes this night, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may I remind you as we come towards the end of our service that if you lit a candle at the beginning, then please do remember to extinguish it before you go to sleep. And thank you for joining with me in this night prayer. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And let us bless one another in the words from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. May you have a peaceful and restful night's sleep and may you wake refreshed in the morning. Good night. <laughs>